little bit of torque steer. I can feel it through my fingertips. Welcome back, I'm Tedward, and today we're driving the 2013 Acura TSX Sport Wagon. I've been inadvertently teasing you guys on Instagram with this car because it's always parked in my driveway. This is actually my dad's car. It's his daily driver, it's got 100,000 miles on it, and it's absolutely filthy, but it's winter, so we get a pass, right? For those of you outside of the US, this is a Honda Accord. It's a Honda Accord wagon. And wagons generally do not sell well in the United States. Everyone wants an SUV or a CUV, something larger. While the standard TSX and Honda Accord were available with a three and a half liter V6, this only came in wagon form with the 2.4 liter inline four cylinder. This K24 produces 201 horsepower. In addition to that, the TSX with the four cylinder in the sedan version was available with a manual six speed. Unfortunately, the wagon was forced to only have the automatic five speed. Now it's not a bad transmission, it's just that this wagon is kind of a bizarro enthusiast vehicle. And by giving it lesser power and no manual, you restrict who is really going to want to operate with it. But let's take a look at the practicality because this thing is so spacious. It's a wonderful vehicle. And despite being seven, eight, nine years old, it's really nice. Good leather, although maybe not my color of choice. Light leather is fine. It makes the it makes the cabin feel a lot bigger. But really, this is a plush place to be. And because Acura, for those who are not in America, Acura is the upscale brand of Honda, like Lexus is to Toyota, it has some luxury features that make the car feel special. Now, one thing I'm very shocked about is that in these rear seats, while they're very normal, they have a lot of lumbar support. This is a place where you could sit for a very long time as a passenger, but there's really no frills back here. I don't have heated seats. I have some HVAC controls, but you know what? Just enjoy the fact that you're in a cool car. The rear end has such an imposing stance. This actually is a really badass rear end. It's wide, it's got great proportions, and you've got this dual exhaust. That really makes you wish it was rocking the 3.5, the J35, but that's okay, it's okay. We're gonna get over it. The hatch, very large. I think this has like 60 cubic feet of storage space. And I never ever talk about storage space because I just don't care. But in this car, it seems so relevant. You can knock those rear seats down and there's just room for everything. This is the most practical thing ever. The sound system is pretty wild and you've got this giant subwoofer built into the side of the trunk. Very cool. Honda noises, we love it. All right, we're on snow tires because we're good doobies and we don't wanna be getting into trouble in the cold, snowy weather. To start our unicorn Acura, we've got our little switchblade key. We have a normal column ignition. Is that the most Honda startup ever? There's something about Hondas. They just have these very distinct sounds and it's just unquestionably a Honda when you get in it. And another thing, in reverse, these always have that straight cut gear sound as if it's a manual transmission, despite the fact that it is absolutely an automatic. Is that not a satisfying sound? That just, I don't know, I had neighbors with Hondas growing up and that sound just absolutely does it for me. And I find it really charming that you get that in the automatic as well with that straight cut uh, reverse. Now, something strange about this car, I guess not strange, but there's ergonomic things about this that just really strike me as interesting. When you shift, this is hinged on the bottom. So you pull up and then back to get it into gear. Most cars actually you push forward and it's hinged on the top. So that's always been kind of a quirky thing in my mind with this car. And it has paddle shifters, which is a little extra, but appreciated when you need to grab a different gear. They are not identical. So this side actually has some little ridges under it on the positive upshift. And this side is completely flat on the downshift. So I find that really interesting that they, they even like texture coded the paddle shifters throttle response. The first bite of this throttle is so aggressive, you always look like a jerk pulling out of a parking spot. You've got to be really gentle, and I guess there's no way out with the snow drift. So let's go over here. Wow. 
winds out really nice. I do dig the sound of this engine, but it isn't fast, but it's adequate. And you do need to ring it out to get the most of it, which is kind of why this as a manual would have been a better option because you would have been more comfortable hanging on to those gears and making it sing. Something that's really beautiful about this wagon though is this chassis and suspension. It has independent rear suspension and it makes the body control really nice. And it's easy to kind of chuck around and be playful. Now, you're not gonna get some like wild lift off oversteer from the thing, but it does behave relatively neutral. You're not afraid to push it either, which is really special about an everyday driver because you're likely not buying this as an enthusiast vehicle, but you might be an enthusiast who needs the daily driver, who needs the space, who needs the practicality, but doesn't want the boredom of a boring vehicle. And that's what's great about this is it gives you kind of an enthusiast vibe. It handles like a good car. you get a lot of downshifts from it because it's always trying to keep you in a fuel efficient place on the tachometer, low RPMs, but the second you ask for power, it's really gonna need to give you that downshift because there's not a whole lot down low. Typical Honda stuff though. Great chassis, maybe low on the power, good handling, phenomenal steering and tactility, lots of road noise. And for me, road noise isn't that much of an issue because I'm gonna just kind of blast the radio. There are people though who really just cannot deal with the road noise, especially if you're coming from a vehicle that was really well insulated. If you're coming from like an Audi A8 or a BMW 7 Series, likely you're not going into an Acura TSX wagon, but you get the picture. If you've got something quiet and suddenly you've got something loud, it becomes pretty apparent. I actually think this K24 sounds pretty good too. A lot of people just like neg on four cylinders. Honda four cylinders can be some of the coolest sounding engines ever. And I guess it must've just gotten that reputation back in like the late nineties, the fast and the furious days in the early 2000s where people just associated the sounds of these cars with like obnoxious street racers. And unfortunately, these are pretty cool engines that are high revving little monsters and you can do some great things with them. You can really tell that this vehicle was built by people who like driving. The seating position is so good. It's lower in the car than my M3. I actually feel really at home here. I feel like I have exactly the control over the car because I'm where I'd like to be. Definitely attention to detail and visibility was taken in the design of this as well. Big mirrors, almost like goofily large mirrors. I don't think goofily is a real world, but that's fine. And I can see pretty much everything, but I will say that you can tell that they kind of just wagonize the Accord because if you look out the back, it's kind of like an oval. It's like a port and there's definitely some space that you cannot see. But it's not like a terrible blind spot. It's not, it's not obstructed that badly but one would assume that helps with rigidity and safety. I'm pleasantly surprised by the fact that the suspension feels more sport tuned than luxury tuned. Now there's body roll, but it's appropriate. And it's pretty nice that you can still feel what's going on. Now body roll and a little bit of soft suspension doesn't mean that it's luxurious. I actually really appreciate a little bit of body roll because it helps you detect when things are gonna get ugly and, and it tells you where the grip is. So a little bit of body roll goes a long way, but the way that it, it, it controls bumps and that it does you know lean into a corner, it feels sporty, it feels sport tuned, it feels fun. And if you don't believe me, drive a Miata. Miatas usually have a lot of body roll and those are definitely sporty vehicles and they do a great job of communicating to the driver and that's exactly what this does. At 110,000 miles, this thing has less squeaks and rattles than my M3. Now, it's certainly seen less abuse than my M3 because that car goes to the track on occasion, but this is a really well-built thing and I think that anyone who's looking for kind of like that cheap, beater daily that they can still appreciate and love, you probably go find one of these with 200,000 miles on it, spend just a like, uh, you know, 
maybe five or ten thousand dollars and do really well for yourself. Ooh, Triumph TR6. Not in this weather, man. You are asking for a rust bucket. Let's try on the paddles for size. Second gear. All right, it's shifting for me anyway. I thought I was gonna be able to get my own upshift, but it's doing its own thing. I couldn't get it to do it. But I, I do think this thing hustles just fine as long as you wind it out properly. It's also worth mentioning how fantastic this gauge cluster is. These are like floating needles, very similar to what you'd see on a Mercedes back in the day. And the, the, the numbers are so legible. My M3 has the tiniest little numbers. It's very difficult to actually see your speed if you don't have great vision. And this gives you nice, big, blocky, but not goofy font. So you can easily tell what speed you're actually going and what RPM you're at. I find this car to just be so controllable in every situation, including braking. I mean, it brakes really nice in a straight line. You don't, you know, it, it, ABS keeps it tracking in a very straight line, which means that you're never concerned that, oh no, I've lifted too much weight off the rear. Ah, oh, is it gonna be squirmy? Like, this is such an easy car to commute in. This is such an easy car to play with and to be an enthusiast with. A little bit of torque steer, you can feel it through my fingertips. But we can still get into traffic just fine, despite not having monster power. Toss it back into drive, we had it in our little S mode, our sport mode, not bad. But here, you know, 80 miles an hour, cruising along just fine, under 3000 RPM, but like I said, this transmission is very active because it wants you in that power band. So even if I give it a little bit of throttle, ready? There's a downshift. So it's not like that comfy thing where it's in top gear and you're just gonna have torque to drag you up to whatever passing speed you want. It is gonna be moving around quite a bit. And that's, that's okay. That's very typical of four cylinder Honda life. So what would I change? Look, beggars can't be choosers. I'm very thankful that this wagon even was sold in the United States to begin with. But things that I think would have made it really, really special. A manual six-speed transmission. That would have gone a long way in the enthusiast community to sell this car to a diverse group of people who I think would have appreciated it a little more. Then all-wheel drive probably would have made it have more mass appeal. Not really my cup of tea. I'm fine with a front wheel drive platform. It reduces weight and complexity and we're good to go. But I think normal Americans, if they're looking for a car like this, probably would have wanted an all wheel drive option. But really, the piece de resistance, the thing that would have made this thing really incredible, a proper unicorn, is the J35, the V6 with a six speed manual. Oh man, you throw a limited slip differential up front, that would have been an absolute monster because all of you know, if you've ever driven a V6 Accord, they rip, they absolutely rip and they sound phenomenal. So this car, yes, it is as good as you think it is, but it does have some shortcomings, but we should be thankful that it came in the first place. However, if you wanna be like the Monster Garage folks, find a way to jam a six cylinder and a six speed in this thing and go to town. Thank you guys so much for watching, liking, commenting, and subscribing. Don't forget to respect the drive. Big thank you to my dad. You know, Boston Motorsports didn't give me this car today. My dad gave me this car today. So thank you, dad, for buying a great station wagon. Maybe we'll convince you to wash it once in a while. I'll take it down to craft detailing for you as a thank you. We'll get it all, all cleaned up. Don't forget to respect the drive. I'll see you in the next one.